Tooth implants are artificial tooth roots. In most cases, they have a screw-shaped or cylindrical design. They are implanted into the jaw bones and replace lost tooth roots. Here, you see an implant in a sterile package in a glass bulb. With the help of a conversion rod, the implant is removed using the insertion instrument. In the picture, you see the insertion instrument, conversion rod, and implant. After positioning the implant, the conversion rod is removed from the implant and only the implant remains in the bone. In this case, the implant remains in the dull disc. Implantology has been officially recognized as a form of treatment since 1982. There are various implant systems. However, the differences in the various systems available on the market are more or less meaningless to the patient. Suffice to say that all of the systems available today are very well developed after decades of competition. Scientific studies over the last 25 years demonstrate that implants have a very high success rate. Ten years after a successful healing process, over 90% of implants are still in use and functioning very well. By comparison, after 10 years, conventional bridges have a success rate of about 80%. If a tooth rescue is attempted by filling the root and is not performed by a specialist known as an entodontologist, the success rate drops dramatically, down to 50% after 10 years. These numbers clearly demonstrate that implants are superior to conventional dentures, especially within the context of longevity. Despite all these developments, some patients are still insecure about getting a tooth implant because they have heard or read about allergies caused by titanium tooth implants. It's important that anyone considering getting a tooth implant understand that respectable specialist literature does not recognize titanium allergies. Therefore, the statement, I cannot tolerate implants, is untrue, even though some patients will actually suffer the loss of an implant. So why does this false belief in titanium allergy continue to persist in the population? It is what's known as iatrogenically caused. That means it is caused by doctors. This rumor began within doctor circles. Implantology is a very lucrative branch within the dental industry. Which explains why there used to be, and sometimes still are, implants inserted into unsuitable patients. Unsuitable means, for example, inflammation in the mouth, or because... The anamnesis was ignored, in the case of a heavy smoker, etc. Such false indicators can frequently lead to the loss of the implant after weeks, months, or years. The doctor is, unfortunately, very unlikely to admit a mistake, and it's more likely that he or she will tell their patient, you do not tolerate titanium. This is how the concept of titanium allergy first emerged. Implants are a reliable and proven solution, so long as the correct indicators are used. For example, if at all possible, there should be no inflammation present, such as periodontitis, poor root treatment, etc. In some cases, despite appropriate planning and execution of the indicators, an implant can occasionally fail to heal correctly and will need to be removed later on. While this is certainly disappointing, it is very rare and does not lead to any considerable physical damage. The ensuing bone defect is sealed by the formation of new bone material. A new implant is possible if desired by the patient. There will be more about this later in the video entitled Implantation. If desired by the patient, a conventional denture is also possible after the loss of an implant.